Hello, Jeff Zwerink again here with Give and Take, where we look at the latest scientific issues to help equip you to share the gospel. Today I'm joined by Ken Samples and Sandra Demas, and we are going to ask the question whether we ought to just throw away our smartphones. Well, should we, Ken? I mean, this seems kind of a backwards way to approach life in the 21st century. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of data, Jeff, that indicates that people handle their phone a lot. I mean, uh, maybe on the excessive side, some people touch their phone 150 to 300 times a day. And when you look at data that indicates that young people spend six to eight hours a day, and that's usually social media and texting, they tend to have feelings of isolation, even depression. Mm -hmm. So there are some concerns that maybe we're overdoing the technology. I don't think you're ever going to be able to throw it out. I mean, I, I look at a computer screen as a scholar uh, quite a few hours in a day, but maybe we can manage it rather than just throw it out. Well, okay, so I, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, I, I spend quite a bit of time looking at a computer. I mean, you can't do computer programming without a computer, to be honest. Right. Um, what, what, what are some of the, the downsides to using a computer and what are, I mean, are there things where doing something else is actually better? Uh, well, I, again, I think, you know, it's interesting to me and ironic that Facebook was indicated, the goal of it was to connect people, mm -hmm. make people feel interconnected in a community. But some of the data indicates that people do feel feelings of isolation. And in young people, it, it can be problematic. I mean, learning to talk to people, mm -hmm. have conversations at the dinner table. You know, I advocate things like maybe a screen Sabbath. How about a whole day where you don't look at a screen? That's kind of hard to take. Mm -hmm. But how about a meal where you don't touch your phones? How about a, a family time where you read from a print book? I think all reading is good reading. I think print reading is better. Mm -hmm. But those are ways maybe of managing, particularly with the kids. Well, you know, your, your comment about uh, screen Sabbath, uh, you know, we, we fast from eating occasionally for yeah. things. It's not that food's bad, but that it can kind of dominate if we're not careful. Yeah. So, so it seems like it's a tool in some sense. I, uh, Sandra, how would uh, you weigh in here a little bit? What are... If this is a tool that can be used for good or bad, what are some of the good ways we can use this tool? Well, I think connecting with people, like Ken was talking about, being able to connect with high school friends. I mean, I mm -hmm. have friends I was able to reconnect with and, and see now in real life or develop friendships and connections deeper, first on, on social media and then... You know, we make plans there. It's just we're we're always online, so we're able to kind of connect there and then say, "Hey, let's get together for coffee or whatever." And so I think that mm -hmm. is kind of a positive. Mm -hmm. But what Ken mentioned about uh, just feeling isolated, we talk about FOMO, like fear of missing out. Right. And so when we're on social media, we have the ability now to see that our friends are hanging out and we didn't get an invite, and we didn't have that ability before. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a downside. But the positive things, you know, I do think are, are connecting to people, learning, having access to information very quickly. We can fact check things inexpensively mm -hmm. without having to go to a library or go to a university to look up you know, maybe documents, uh, articles and stuff. We do a lot of, in, in our editorial team, we do a lot of fact checking for all of the end notes that you authors mm. um, provide yeah. in your content. Yeah. And so we are able to fact check that online and we don't have to go to libraries or anything. We could do it well, here. Th yeah. This discussion kind of raises a question, a little bit of a curveball. It's like, might mm -hmm. it be that certain types of people are more and less susceptible to the damaging effects of screens? That, you know, I know yeah. you to be a pretty extroverted person, and so I could <laughs> see where the phone is just a way to coordinate what you're going to do right. socially. Whereas I tend to be a little more introverted where the phone could very easily be the excuse not to actually interact with somebody. Mm -hmm. you know? So is there, do you think it actually impacts people differently? I think it can because it can mean that they're so used to communicating online that when they're having an actual conversation, they're not able to edit what they're saying. So it might be that conversations are a little bit more awkward because they're used to having them online where mm. you can sound super clever, but when you're face to face, you don't have that luxury of going, you know, hitting the backspace and saying, oh, I, this, this actually sounds better <laughs> and right. enter. So that can be, you know, a difficulty. But yes, you're right, I am a bit more extroverted. And so it is a way to um, let that show online. And so the way I engage social media mm -hmm. is, is from that perspective of wanting to connect with people. And I think, Jeff, that, you know, there are studies that indicate that 
loneliness is at an epidemic level. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's all the fault of social media. I mean, growing right. up as a young person is often a challenging time. Also, people can feel lonely because they don't feel connected to God. I mean, there are a lot of ways of explaining the data mm -hmm. as to what it, what it means. So what, what would you give as uh, maybe one or two top suggestions to help use the media for good benefits, the good purposes, but yet to counteract or to mitigate the, the negative consequences that might arise? I think Sandra's right. I think that there's a real convenience uh, in interacting with people. And I think, you know, people do feel like they're part of a broader community. I, I think, though, we want to emphasize personal relationships, personal interaction. You know, it's not a bad thing to turn your computer off, you know, take a walk, um, mm -hmm have real personal interaction. And, and I think we want to encourage, especially young people who are developing some of those elements, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe to be less dependent upon our electronics. How about you, Sandra? Yeah, I think, I think we can engage being online as we would any relationship. So if at the end of a conversation with someone we feel emotionally drained or frustrated, that's a clear indicator that we shouldn't really press into that too much. So if we're on social media and we feel that afterwards, we feel frustrated or angry, then that's a good indicator to say, hey, you, you should maybe pull away from this. Or if you're encountering maybe a group online, a, a support group, and you feel closer to God through that, then that's a good way to use it. And that's a good indicator that it's time well spent. So, you know, I find it interesting as I'm listening to what you're talking about that it's like, you know, this really is a tool. It's like you have to evaluate is this tool helping me build or is it tearing down? Mm -hmm. And as it's building, that's great. Whereas if it's tearing down, maybe let's do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't escape the irony of here we are talking about throwing away our screens and cell phones and stuff on a YouTube video or <laughs> using the very media we're talking about. And, you know, it really does just illustrate that the technology is out there that allows us to connect, to reach people we might not have reached, to do ministry in ways that we couldn't have uh, if we didn't have the technology. And so let's use this technology to recognize that there are damaging parts to uh, maybe inclined to move away from personal relationships. But as Christians, let's use the technology to engage those relationships, to build those relationships, to point those relationships to God, because that's ultimately the fulfillment of how God's created us.